Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with the one and only Javed Akhtar. Javed Saab, the Muslims for secular democracy. Now this is what it says on your website for the MFSD. It is not possible to fight Hindu communalism without fighting against Muslim communalism, nor is it possible to fight Muslim communalism without fighting against Hindu communalism because the different communalisms feed on each other. Please explain. You know, hate breeds hate. And uh, you cannot fight hate with hate. If you want to curb hate, you have to fight your own hate within yourself also. It's as simple as that. But this is another question which was posed to you. Let's, let's stick on the... On the you, and you have, I know you've drawn a line between what is secular and what is non-secular. And you don't say that the opposite of religious is secular. You say that the opposite of religious is atheism. The opposite of secular is fascism. Well, Undemocratic or, behavior. Yeah, very right. Right? Very so right. that's what, it, at least that's what it's very explained right. on your very website. Right. Very right. So what should, this was a question which was posed to you, and the question was in the Times of India, what should ordinary Muslims do? And you responded, you said there's really, they're really in an unenviable position. All they can do is really hope to survive in places like Gujarat. Muslims must understand that though many have been butchered in Gujarat, this is not a Hindu-Muslim problem. This is, they must understand that it is a clash of secularism and democracy versus fascism and intolerance. They have to improve their lot by lending strength to secular forces and by becoming more secular themselves. Now, this is quite a choice. Indian Muslims today are facing, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Or well, anybody, any secular person has the same choice, whether that secular person is a Muslim or a Hindu. But many people would say that it is because they were facing such a choice that's it, that they opted for Pakistan. Many people confuse secularism. No, you, are putting, you are putting the cart before the horse. They asked for Pakistan because they were coming to some people would say, saying, some yeah. people would say they asked for Pakistan because they wanted religious autonomy. Religious autonomy? We have more religious autonomy than any Muslim country in the world, as a matter of fact. Name one Muslim country where all the sects of Muslims can practice their religion the way they want to do it. Can Qadianis do or Ahmadiyyas do that in your country? Can uh, Sunnis can do it in Iran? No, it's not possible. Okay. This is the only country in the world, I repeat, where Muslims have total religious freedom, including Pakistan. Then how do you explain acts like Godra? That is not religious uh, karma, uh, persecution. I mean, it's a common... This is the problem. Let us not confuse religion with communism. There are fascistic organizations like RSS or VHP or Bajrang Dal, and they are like... Uh, Ku Klux Klan and they have been very aggressive towards minorities not only Muslim but Christians too but people who are fighting against them are not only Muslims as a matter of fact, much more than Muslims they are Hindus who are fighting with them you also and this is very interesting as well you just mentioned the RSS you have also put the RSS and the Muslim League on the same platform you both you said that both were no, collaborators you said both were collaborators of the British Empire. Yes, I did. And I'll to, tell you what. You want to expand on that? Can you name one Muslim League? Uh, because I know. RSS was formed in 1925. And India got independence in 1947. In 22 years, not one RSS leader was behind the bars for a day. Is that a yardstick? No, no. Yes, yes. Because it means they never protested against British imperialism. On the other hand, no Muslim League leader was arrested for five hours. Never. Never. A Not only of, that. A lot I'll of, tell you. A lot of Muslim leaguers would say that that's because they were more constitutional. They were, they were more constitutional again. The imperialism. They but were constitutional. Whose constitution? They were following British's constitution. Wonderful. Again, in 1942, when Gandhi gave call of quit India, there were only two organizations in the subcontinent who opposed that. One was RSS, another was Muslim League. And there's the so comeback there's tremendous was that. similarity the, between the and, two. And the comeback was that was because Jinnah Saab was perhaps uncomfortable with the use of religious symbolism used by Gandhiji. So he made a religious country. How wonderful. <laughs> A religious country or a theocracy? That's two different things. Well, it's a theocracy. 
You call it an Islamic country, don't you? It's supposed to be Islamic Republic. Fine. So you were against Gandhi's secular religious uh, practices, and to oppose that, you made a country which is theocratic. All right. Well, speaking of theocracy, you've also said that Pakistan is a laboratory for Hindutva. Very right. How so? Because what do they want to do? RSS people, they are the mirror image of Muslim League. Muslim League wanted a country for Muslims. They want a country for Hindus. And they want everybody else to be the second great citizen in this country, RSS. It is the mirror image of Pakistan. That is what they want to do, what has been achieved. If it's a rather it is simplistic. an achievement in Pakistan. It's a rather simplistic view. No, not at all. Not at all. You have a theocratic country. They also want to make a theocratic country. Ultimately, their goal, Godra, the is RSS to them. also called for wiping out minorities, sir. You don't Pakistan have Pakistan has never left. called for that. No, no Muslim it? League or no one in Pakistan has ever called for that. As a matter of fact, you have to have a minority to say that. Do you know that? Uh, although whoever is left is also treated like that. We know about it. There's a place called Shantinagar near uh, Lahore. You must find out a few years back what had happened there. I mean, how uh, any Christian who owns good land can be told that he has said blasphemous things and can be hanged or put it behind the jail. It's a common thing. As far as the Hindus are concerned there, how many Hindus you have? At the time of partition, you had 10% Hindus. Now they are not even one person. So to be unjust with minorities, you have to have some minorities left. But how can, you, how can you, coming back to communalism, how can you say that a problem which many say, and not, this is not just many in Pakistan, many across the world, say which is rampant in India, that there is some sort of Hindu right wing. Of course. That there is some sort of Hindu I right wing. Name, how can you hide, hide behind fa the, the am... label of fascism and just call it a, a religious is, communalism and not what it I is, a you, war of religions. No, it's not a war of religions at all. They are, um, Savarkar, who started, coined this word Hindutva, he was a self-proclaimed atheist. Jinnah, you know better how religious he was. So let us not confuse religion with communalism. Okay, well this is your, this is on, on calling Pakistan a lab experiment for the Hindutva. You said, and this is a, a little statistical analysis from you, that the, you, you go on and say that uh, some, this is your, I guess you could call it statistical analysis of Pakistan. Um, the Parivar's ultimate fantasy is a Hindu Pakistan. You're talking about the uh, larger Hindu Parivar. In Pakistan, around 11, uh, whose population is around 15 crore, nearly 75 percent, that is around 11 crore, are directly or indirectly engaged in agriculture. Some 200 families own most of the agricultural land. Even assuming each of these extended families comprise of 1,000 members, some 200,000 people control all the agricultural property. What is the status of the remaining 10 crore and 98 lakh depend is de people dependent on agriculture for their livelihood? The fact is that they are landless and even bonded laborers living in abysmal conditions. These people are the total mercy of these landlords and in many places there are no schools. The police dare not enter these areas. Any political economist would completely disagree with these statistics, sir. You've got a point, but you might be generalizing a little too much, Javed Sahib. Really? Really? These numbers are you don't have veracity. Are you suggesting that Vadera's allowed allow schools and hospitals in the areas whenever and uh, whichever NGO wants to do that. It's happening. It's not happening. It's happening. And as a matter of fact, these are your own channels that have informed me. It has not come from some other source. It's not rampant, sir. And it's not like it used to be. The fact, so things are improving. Which is not a bad thing now, is it? But then as to go matter, around and go around generalizing. Fact, there has not been. You've, you've put a stamp of disapproval. It's very a, simple. But you've put a stamp of disapproval on Pakistan. No, no. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, repeating the words that I have read from Pakistani journalists and I'm repeating the words that I have heard from different Pakistani channels. These are my source of information. The fact is that after partition, when you had Pakistan, there was never any land reform like in India. You did not abolish Jagirdari. You did not abolish Zamindari. The fact is, 
the talking of democracy in a society where there is jagirdari and zamindari is a strange contradiction which at least I can't understand. You've also gone and uh, compared uh, Jinnah and, and put Jinnah, Thakre and Advani on the same uh, level. You said that they are uh, either no, no, non-religious or atheists and uh, who can be extremely communal. Yeah. Please explain. Do you think any one of them is a very religious person or was a very religious person? Actually, you should know about your own Qaeda Azam. If still... you don't know about Thakre or Advani, I can understand that. But calling them non-religious or atheistic while at the same time calling them communal. That's what I want to drive at. What do you, I, don't know, I don't know. Maybe our definition of communalism differs. Which one of these three has not done it? Here was a man who should have spoken about the downtrodden, who should have spoken about the deprived, but he chose to about speak about Muslims. All Muslims are not in one situation. But they are not a. Please understand one thing: they are not a monolith. So ultimately, he was backed by Muslim nawabs and jagirdars, and Muslim industrialists who knew that perhaps their interests will not be saved with billahs and tatas. But people say that he was a legal man. He was a constitutionalist. That, that, right. that, that those religious things that did not matter. matter. Very what, right. what he wanted was the constitutional protection Wonderful. of Muslims in India. That's what people Muslims say. Muslims in India again. To think that Muslims are a monolith or Hindus are a monolith is communalism. Which Muslims you are talking about? Did, right. he, did he care for the Muslims who were the weavers in uh, Banaras or in Malegaon or did he care for the Nawabs so no, huh? or the industrialists? So you don't say, you're, not, you're saying Muslims and Hindus in India are not homogenous? There's no, not they, one, one sort of Muslim or Hindu in India. No, no, of course. So the, the basic tunisian theory, uh, theory is sold by RSS and by Jinnah. All RSS right. also believes in two nations. All right. This is what further uh, spans of uh, a little bit of simplicity. You have another quote in the Hindu in the first, on the 1st of September 2006 uh, in a title, in an article titled Indira Gandhi Award for Javed Akhtar. As for Pakistan, he said its role vis-a-vis -vis was dubious at least and diabolic at the extreme. There, was a per there is a perverse thinking in Pakistan. India's secularism embarrasses them. They want to see the right wing thrive here so that India becomes a theocratic state so that they would justify the involvement in terrorism here. Two questions. Question number one. Yeah. What's your proof? that Pakistan is involved in terrorism in India, number one. And question number two, aren't you doing exactly, going exactly against what you just went against right now, which is saying that Pakistan, you're making Pakistan sound like a monolith empire, like a monolith entity, because there's several Pakistans. There's an emerging middle class Pakistan. There's a deep state Pakistan. There's a Pakistan controlled by the army and perhaps to some level the intelligence agencies. There's a Pakistan run by Jagirdars. There's a Pakistan of bonded laborers. There's a Pakistan of good old normal tax paying citizens. But you make Pakistan sound like this one us versus them entity. This is not very you, sir. This is simplistic. Point considered. I accept that. When I was saying Pakistan here, maybe in future I'll be more careful. I was talking of Pakistani establishment. I should have said that. Accepting. Okay. Second question. First question again, sorry. Proof. What evidence do you have? Why are you saying that this would embarrass, if you are really meaning that this would embarrass the establishment, what do you mean by embarrass? My friend, the very... What proof do you have? I'll tell you. The very existence of Pakistan is based on a theory that says Hindus and Muslims are incompatible. They are not compatible at all. They cannot live together. They are two different people. Two nation theory, they are two nations. They have their own history. They have their own culture. They have their own uh, civilization. And it is not possible for them to live together. That is two nation theory. These are two different nations. Anything which will prove that it is wrong will embarrass them. Anything which will prove it is right will give them strength. If Babri Masjid is demolished, it gives them strength. 
If Javed Akhtar becomes a successful writer in India, it is embarrassing for them. Why is it embarrassing? Because, again... People are proud of the fact that Javed Akhtar is... People are, people are, people are, as a matter of fact, not the establishment. Do you know one thing? Even the Javed Saab, even the establishment has different levels. There's no one, like, big building in which the establishment sits. There's different parts of the establishment. Then you can say that about any party. But there are some basic norms that are followed. Like, Kafi Azmi, K. Abbas, Sardar Jafri, these are the people who are very important writers of a language which is supposed to be your national language, Urdu. They have gone to Pakistan many times. You go and find out, have they ever been interviewed by Pakistan radio or Pakistan PIA, uh, uh, Pakistan television, have they ever been? The answer is no. When any writer, any painter, any artist comes from Pakistan, we interview them on our television, our radio. We have public performance of Pakistani uh, artists. I think India. that's a little oversimplistic. No, sir. they are interviewed. Look, no, they are they, people, artists with from a capital N and a capital O. There's Kafi uh, Azmi or Sardar Jafri or K. Abbas. Two examples. One never. Two is examples he a giant? out of I'm, hundreds of Indian no. artists who might have come across the border and are loved and revered Urdu, in Pakistan. Urdu writers who are intellectuals, who are giants in their fields, they were never interviewed. Never. And that's your yardstick? No, no. For the two nation theory that, to kick no, in? No, no. That's a, that's a manif that is the manifestation of that. All right. All Do right. you realize? And when, on the other hand, when Fayad Ahmad Fayad had come to India, you were treated like a... a Royalty. All right. We have to take a short break here. We're talking to the one and only Javed Akhtar. You're watching Talk Back. Do not go anywhere. And uh, you cannot fight hate with hate. If you want to curb hate, you have to fight your own hate within yourself also. It's as simple as that. But this is another question which was posed to you. Let's let's stick on the on the. You, and you have I know you've drawn a line between what is secular and what is non-secular. And you don't say that the opposite of religious is secular. You say that the opposite of religious is atheism. The opposite of secular is fascism. Well, undemocratic or, behavior. Yes, yeah, very right. Right? Very so right. that's what, it, at least that's what it's very explained right. on your very website. Right. Very right. So what should, this was a question which was posed to you, and the question was in the Times of India, what should ordinary Muslims do? And you responded, you said there's really, they're really in an unenviable position, all they can do is really hope to survive in places like Gujarat. Muslims must understand that though many have been butchered in Gujarat, this is not a Hindu-Muslim problem. This is, they must understand that it is a clash of secularism and democracy versus fascism and intolerance. They have to improve their lot by lending strength to secular forces and yeah. people would say they asked for Pakistan because they wanted religious autonomy. Religious autonomy? We have more religious autonomy than any Muslim country in the world as a matter of fact. Name one Muslim country where all the sects of Muslims can practice their religion the way they want to do it. Can Qadianis do or Ahmadiyas do that in your country? Can Shia, Sunnis can do it in Iran? No, it's not possible. Okay. This is the only country in the world, I repeat, where Muslims have total religion. By becoming more secular themselves. Now, this is quite a choice Indian Muslims today are facing, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Or well, anybody, any secular person has the same choice, whether that secular person is a Muslim or a Hindu. But many people would say that it is because they were facing such a choice that, that they opted for Pakistan. Many people confuse secularism. No, you, are putting, you are putting the cart before the horse. They asked for Pakistan because they were coming. Some people would you say... Are saying some Welcome back to Talk Back. We are with the one and only Javed Akhtar. Javed Saab, the Muslims for secular democracy. Now this is what it says on your website for the MFSD. It is not possible to fight Hindu communalism without fighting against Muslim communalism, nor is it possible to fight Muslim communalism without fighting against Hindu communalism, because the different communalisms feed on each other. Please explain. You know, hate breeds hate. 